Welcome to episode 7 of part 2 of Koi's Corner. Part 2 to hug and show and tie your world out. If you enjoy it, be great. Are you done? I also think when we shift the focus from how can we protect black people from white people, but you say, okay, on this day, how can I as an individual show Jesus? When you shift it to that, and maybe it's just me, there is such a sense of um, weight taken off of my shoulders. Because if you do look at the whole history of the thing, we are in a better place than we were, but things are not great. So if you're looking at, okay, how, how are we going to help um, systemic racism? That's overwhelming for an individual. Like some people are like, okay, how do we fix this? I'm like, I don't know. It, it hasn't been fixed. But if you're asking me, how do I today make sure that I do my level best to be who Jesus wants me to be to everyone, no matter who they are, not that that's not daunting, but I can do that. And then when that spreads, that's when you see things changing and it not making sense. And they're like, well, th well, why would you do that? Well, then it's amazing to me how in the public school system and just in society, you know, we don't want to bring up God. We don't want to talk about that. And so like, so my husband's an athletic director, football coach, you know, we're not going to talk about God and all this kind of stuff. But now colleges are seeing that athletes who have character are more preferable to ones who we don't care about their character. So though we're not gonna talk about God, we want someone who's honest. We want someone who takes care of one another. We wanna give an award for a good person. And it never ceases to amaze me how God is like, I told you that a long time ago. You should have been listening, but that's okay. We can do it the hard way if you want to. And you're still gonna come back to God no matter what, because he made us. He made us in his image and we crave that. And when people do that, things get taken care of that we don't even think about. We don't even see. They're like, it's not necessarily I'm helping you because you're a black person, but I'm helping you because God would have me help everyone. Mm -hmm. And then that makes you start thinking. And so like, I remember my, um, like people will say, you know, I'm not racist. I treat everyone well. I'm, I'm not going to treat anyone unfairly. And then they have children. And then those people, like, I don't understand why my child brought home someone of a different race. Well, you taught them that you're going to treat everyone well. And then those people get married. And then, so we start having this conversation of, to me, grassroots, it is getting better. Because you're going from just, I'm not racist because I don't treat someone bad. But, okay, I guess you can marry them. To, okay, how are we treating a person? Because if you are... So right now, the information that I'm getting from my children is that if you're biracial, you're getting hate from both sides. You're mm -hmm. getting hate because you're not black enough. And if you got a drop, then you're black. So, you know, and it's not that they're always experiencing that, but that's still a thing. And so I was watching this video and it was this young lady, she was African-American. She was like, dear white people and just what she wanted them to know, right? And then, um, so I was talking to Gray about it. And then he's like, you know, it'd be cool if they had that, that African-American woman saying, dear white people, what she would want them to know so that we can help, help this cause. And then dear, um, then have a white person say, dear black people, this is what I want you to know so we can help this cause. And then he starts crying and he says, and then if you had a biracial person that said, dear people, it's not about the color of your skin. It's just about treating everyone the way they need to be treated. And I think what Tyrell said is when his, when his focus, when our focus is on how does Jesus want me to be? It makes this not near as heavy and hard and overwhelming. Cause I know I've had several white friends talk to me and they're just like, A, they're so sorry. They're so, you know, they feel so bad and they're so good. And I do appreciate that. Like I'm not negating that. I do appreciate that. I think the difference in this conversation than conversations that I have had in the past, cause I'll have some people who've been upset in the past is the idea is like, I, I just didn't know. They're like, it never occurred to me what 
the, the things that you have to talk about that, you know, and I wasn't mad at them for not knowing, but I think maybe because people are talking to me, it reminds me of, it shouldn't be like that. Sometimes I, I remember I got overwhelmed at one point and I was like, you don't have to tell your son that. You don't have to say, be careful because it, it's not going to be an issue, you know? And so you do what you have to do. God has equipped us for every good work. Like we do what we need to do, but like, um, so I saw another video cause all these videos are popping up and it's like the race video where they're all going to race and they're racing for $100 and they all start on the same line. And then he says, okay, before we start, you know, if you had a private school education, take a step forward. It's just kind of trying to show how fair is not necessarily equal. The thing that touched me the most about the video, because I'm a teacher, so I like concrete examples that teach abstract concepts. But the thing that got me the most about the video was that when he finally said go and they ran and they're just kind of panning the crowd, you would have white individuals that were halfway through. And so they're not running quite as fast because they feel guilty. And then you have people in the back, you know, they're still going to run as hard as they can because they $100, right? And then you have some people who are doing their best. We, I don't want to say we, I don't want someone to not do their best because they feel bad that I have to do something. If we all do our best, and, but just give everyone a fair shot, you right. know? And then if you're like, but we live in a society where that doesn't happen, you're right. Then you do the best you can so then you can affect positive change. And that, and that affecting positive change may be something as simple as when someone makes a joke that's funny and everybody's laughing, but it's still racially motivated. And then some people say, well, so-and-so is laughing and they're black. Yes, because we have to survive in life. But when you stand up, it not only enables people to stand up or with a person who might be telling that joke might have felt like oh, this is kind of borderline, but because like you might give the person who is actually doing the harm a way to do good. Um, when we were younger, so um, Gray was applying for a youth minister job. And my, my point in telling this story is to do positive, do your best to take a step in a positive direction, however that is. So anyway, he was applying for a youth minister job, looked like he was gonna get it. Um, and so he had interviewed, it looked really positive, And one of the elders asked if they could come speak with us that night. And so I had made like, like I had little babies. Like, I don't even think I had all my kids. Yeah, I did. Becca had just been born. She hadn't been born very long. And um, I had gotten dinner together and, you know, got everything together. He came in and I, I just knew he was coming to tell us he got the job, you know, because everybody's talking about it. He had just led an impromptu revival that resulted in over a hundred people coming forward. So yes, he's about to be the youth minister, right? So this man comes in and he looks kind of like weary and heavy, you know, like, and I was just like, okay. And so he asked Gray, could he speak with him in another room? Gray takes him to another room. And then they talk for a little bit. You know, I have the kids in the front. So the guy's walking out and I see him. And I was like, well, aren't you going to stay for dinner? And then he's like, no, I'm going to go ahead and go, you know? And I said, well, you have a good evening. You know, not, I have no idea what's going on. Now, I'm sure you can already start and I'm, but at this point I'm clueless. I don't know. And then Gray was just like, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. Da, da, da. So he leaves. So I'm like, what's going on? Right. Um, and so what ended up happening was basically they're not going to give Gray the job. Okay. Now, technically um, as a church or any, any hiring, any business, you don't have to tell people why they're not getting the job for me. And the way that I saw things, I felt like it was a step in the positive direction for that man to have to walk into my house and tell my husband that the reason they're not hiring you is because you're married to an African-American woman. Because then at least it is awareness is being brought. It's like, let's not pretend like it's something it's not. And in him doing that, because you know how small places are, it got out and it it doesn't mean that things all of a sudden got, but it got people talking. And he ended up being a youth minister at another place where we were. But for me, first of all, for some reason, and it's not some reason, when people of the faith remind me that they're human because of the way they treat people based on race, 
it just cuts a little deeper. Because you, you expect that in the world. But when that happens with the person that's a brother or sister in Christ, it's like that, but it's not supposed to be that way. Now, also, I have done things like that, too. So just like it's hurting, like it's not just, oh, it only happens. Like it's a reciprocal thing. You have to constantly be watching yourself to make sure that you're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. But the fact that that man came and told us the truth, to me, that was a positive step. Now, granted, this was like 20 some odd years ago, right? But sometimes I think I have people <laughs> texting me saying, what can I do to find, I'm like, be, be decent, stand up when you want, even if it doesn't sound right. Even if you're like, I don't, I don't know how to confront my friend, just say, I don't think that that's right. Because it does, you don't wake up one day and say, hey, let's stand on someone's neck and not care. Mm -hmm. You play, you make a little joke, you have fun, you watch your friends, you don't like, it just is a downward spiral. I, I am not a math person. But sometimes when I'm talking in my Bible class, like you could have a degree, like be really tiny like this. But if you draw a straight line for that degree, the further you get from this point, the wider it gets. Mm -hmm. So if at first you were just chilling with your friend and you kind of laugh and you kind of laugh at a joke, but you kind of feel uncomfortable, but you don't ever say anything, it will continue to grow. And that's, that works for good and for bad. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. The devil doesn't need a lot. He just needs a little bit and God will take whatever we give him and we'll grow that exponentially. And so um, I have a lot of people saying, what do we do? I think just putting one foot in a positive direction. And sometimes it just starts with telling the truth. So. Jane, you make a lot of, uh, a lot of good points and I was making notes. Oh, <clears throat> like Tyrell said, he's, but I think he said he's 27 years old. I got a pair of socks 27 years old, so I can, <laughs> I can, I can, and I'm not saying I've been there and done that. All I can say is that I've lived and exp I have experiences uh, that I think can help a young black man or a young married interracial couple. Tamara and I have been married for six years. I got to be careful when I say that because She'll say, that's not right. So you know what I'm talking about, Shane. Somewhere <laughs> in the upper 40. <laughs> Somewhere in the upper yeah, 40. You, don't, you don't want to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 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 what Mark and I talked about all week long was we talk about um, trying to see people in God's light. You know, I shared with everybody that the Oklahoma State Offensive Coordinator put on his job application where he, where it was race. He wrote human. And his parents taught him that if you look at people as God's creation as human, you don't have to choose sides. You see that person as God's creation. That has to start from day one. I'm talking about they, you come home from the hospital wrapped in a blanket and they're talking about that. That's the way they grew up. Uh, uh, Minister in Norman shared in a newspaper article that they were at Scissor Tail Park in Oklahoma City and just walking like everybody else and said hi to this young couple pushing, uh, it said a, a child in a stroller. And the child, they said, uh, hi. And the child said, hi, friend. And the ministers assumed, black ministers assumed that this kid, somebody says hi to you in a public place, they must be your friend. And I thought, parents are teaching them that. And so <clears throat> what we got to do is we got to, these issues are all over us and it can overwhelm us. Uh, but we've got to start with, you know, if it's today, let's start today. And if, we, if we're if we all in this together, then let's stay in this together. And we got to stop talking about it, start being about it. And we can do that whether we're one day old, 150 days old, whatever it is. And that to me is the key because we've had conversations We've been having conversations for a long, long time. Um, I got two books out, Corey, that when you talk to me, I hope y'all can see these. One of them says, you can't see it, but it says white is, and the other one says black is. My wife gave me these in 1972. We weren't even married yet, but we were seriously dating. Some of the stuff in there still exists today. And so, yeah, we've made progress, but there's still that 
okay, I'm comfortable, so I need to go back to this, you know. Um, and, and one of the books, Corey, that I, that I frequently refer to is a book by Bill Hyde, Other Than the Bible. I've got to tell you, I don't like that because that, I think that's why we're failing. We think there's something else other than the Bible to fix all this, and it's only the Bible that can fix all this because we interpret things differently, and so therefore there's going to be some human input. Bill Hybels wrote a book, um, Who You Are When Nobody's Watching, and it's talking about character, and it says that in, in his book, and I'm paraphrasing, is that if we want to see people, we have to be consistent in our character. We have to be consistent, and that has to be the character of Jesus. We have to be consistent in our character as, as, as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. This thing, uh, Sharon has talked about her kids. We talked about uh, seeing people in dignity, dignity as human, in, in, in diversity, um, my son, I didn't even know George Floyd had been shot. We were at the Grand Canyon whenever this happened. There's a lady walking around with a sign that's got Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd, and something else in the Grand Canyon on the South Rim. And <clears throat> I looked at my son, and my son is married to a white girl. And they have three boys. And I looked at my son, and I said, what's that all about? He said, where you been? I said, I've been with you for the last four or five years. <laughs> and he said, uh, uh, another black man was, was killed. So we kind of went through that. And we talked for a little bit when we got along. And he said to me, and he said, Dad, <laughs> my three boys, and, and, and if I showed you a picture of my grandson, all three of them, you would swear they were white. Um, uh, but he said, Dad, I am so glad that my sons have light skin, that they have a better chance of not having to deal with a bunch of stuff because their skin is either darker, whatever it is. You know, they'll be able to safely, hopefully, go out after dark and jog if they want to, not be afraid that somebody's going to kill them, shoot at them. So what that said to me is that this young, I'm, and I'm calling them the young generation, they don't want what we're passing on to them in this world. That's why there are so many people Talking in 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 unison about uh, equality, etc. And if you look at a lot of these demonstrations that are going on, there are more white people there. There are, there are more white people there than they showed one in London on the national news this day. Thousands of people. Tamara and I saw one in the paper the other day, and I called in. I said, "Show me a black person in this crowd." They're talking about a a march in Wyoming. Just thousands of people, and. 99% of them are white. And so I, I say, praise God. And I'm saying white. 99% of them are of some ethnicity. So, so praise God that the world is saying equality needs to happen. Uh, equality needs to come on. And what my generation has lived through, the, the generations coming up behind us said, we don't want that. We do not want it. We want our yeah. kids to live in safety. We want our kids to be able to do and be what they want to be. Uh, in spite of, or, or regardless of what color of their skin or anything like that. And so um, uh, I think that uh, the decisions that, that we have to make as older people, middle-aged people, and as young people, the decisions that we have to make, it's like every day we choose. We choose to be, um, our character needs to be consistent, but God wants us to be, and you have to do it every day. One more thing I want to share with you. You had asked, Corey, when was the first time you realized that treat it differently? Uh, one of the things you want to talk about. Well, mine occurred at Disney World s several years ago. I mean, our kids were little, and my kids, my kids, Sharon, are probably older than you. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> uh, we were at Disney World, and we go to this thing. There's got to be 500 people, and that's not an exaggeration in this and. Hold on a minute. Oh, you're good. There got to be 500 people in this deal. And what it was, you go into this, this show, and they're going to pick three people out of the audience to do three, three different things. Okay? And so we're standing in the, literally in the back. And because, you know, I got my arms folded for a couple. Um, but anyhow, they start pointing at, you know, this guy, 
back there, back there. And I'm totally oblivious. Long story short, they had chosen me to come up. And one of the things that they did was I got in Carson. It was a, uh, not really Johnny Carson. It was, oh. it was a set thing. Okay. Oh. So they had Johnny Carson on tape and I'm sitting there on the, on the set and he's asking me questions and I've got my Disney World clothes. It's pretty cool. And I thought, wow, I don't know what, I mean, just, I'm sitting, literally at the back of the building at minimum 500 people. No big deal. So we go on, we're there, you know, about four hours later, we're at this place where they are putting on, um, oh goodness, what do you call it? We can put these things on and it's, uh, all right, 3D glasses? Well, it was 3D, but, but Virtual you put these reality? things. Yeah, maybe. But what it was was you were on this uh, carpet, uh, carpet ride type thing, and you were to go through this, the town and find this jewel. And there's still, there's got to be 300 people in there. And they're choosing people. They tell you what they're going to go, okay, we want you. And, of course, I'm standing there just stupid as all get out. Well, I got picked again. This is the same day. So I get this, you know, they set us up and they tell us about what we're supposed to do. But to put on one of these virtual helmets and you own this carpet, you're supposed to be in a race. And I distinctly remember that they were saying, now Bobby is flying through the city. He's running over stuff. And, oh, there's Herb. He's out for a Sunday afternoon drive. I mean, I, didn't, I had no idea what I was doing on this thing. But the point was, when we, we got, I got picked to do things three times that day. Uh, Indiana Jones thing, where they had picked me to do something. Uh, but that's when I felt like, and Tamara told me, we talked about it, she said, I think they picked you out because you were black and they're wanting to show, you know, uh, inclusion, if you will. And so that was the first time I thought, and I'm like, hey, this being black is pretty cool, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to bring this back to Oklahoma, you know. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow night on part three. It's, to me, it's a generational thing where we have got to start every day um, kind of change because Sharon's kids don't want what we're trying to pass on to them. Tyrell does not want that. They are sick and tired of the rest of the world seeing this now, and enough is enough. All 50 states held at least some form of protest. There are other countries. You, we, I mean, countries that don't even like us, like, <laughs> out here protesting. And, you know, you're like, man, like, that must mean that, one, we're really messed up, the other countries have to fight on our behalf, too. And two, like, like we're coming together. People, you know, people are in London, the UK, everywhere. 